How much you say you had? 50k? What's going on Neon Nation and welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 lore. Today we're talking about the best of the best solos, the soldiers, mercenaries, and street samurai of the cyberpunk world. From veteran Morgan Blackhand to cyborg solo Adam Smasher to the top rated solos according to the Solo of Fortune handbook, this video will highlight the top dogs when it comes to hired muscle. We briefly touched on some of the legendary solos from the lore who were mentioned in the 25 minute gameplay analysis, so this video will come at the perfect time. Solos are the elite fighting machines of the cyberpunk world. From hired assassins to bodyguards to killers and soldiers, solos know their way around a myriad of high impact weapons, strength based cybernetics and combat drugs. Typically the lone wolf freelance type, most solos are ex-military looking for any opportunity to carve up the streets in exchange for a handsome sum of eddies. From corporate armies to personal bodyguards to black ops assassins, there is an array of different niches a talented solo can prescribe to. The best solos from 2020, ranked from 1 to 10, can be found via an article called American Angels, written by one of Europe's best solos, Juan Paul Ripperdock Duvalier. Let's go down the list and find out who's the best. At number 10 we have Joshua K, Bodyguard and Assassin. In the 2020s, Joshua is a newcomer to the solo scene, rising through the Night City Underground with three big successes under his belt. His first success came with the assassination of a famed corporate raider, killing him swiftly and escaping out of the 12th story window into a cleverly placed aerodyne. His second came when he replaced famous brain dancer Slade McCallaghan's bodyguard, silencing four assassination attempts. Joshua's third big victory was saving famous promoter Vampire Elton, despite Elton already having a security force. Joshua is pretty much untraceable and thus is known for frequent bioscope jobs. At number 9 we have Taviki, political activist and bodyguard. This Russian born who came to America in 2017, served in the Russian VDV, and went on a political rampage across Europe for six years before arriving. She has suspected ties to various terrorist groups and has been credited with the Raven Micro Cybernetics bombing in Balsam, as well as a Biotechnica hijacking. She is anti biotech to her core. At number 8, we have Susan Forrest, NorCal State Executioner, who we saw referenced in the 2077 gameplay in the Afterlife Bar. Forrest is an ex Max Tac officer who's been designated to track down highly dangerous fugitives on the run. With 20 confirmed executions in 2020, Forrest is kitted with the best of the best in equipment and weapons and carries an assault rifle with a grenade launcher, a sidearm, and an SMG. At number 7, we have Shaitan, an anti corporate freelance full board. Shaitan despises Arasaka and will take any job out there that involves tearing them down. This descent into obsession with destroying this Japanese megacorporation has fueled Shaitan's rise from a good solo to a great solo with an outstanding record. He sports an Eclipse Covert Operations full conversion body which offers maximum versatility, firepower and stealth into one compact package. No one quite knows where his hate for Arasaka stems from, but it's rumored Shaitan's mother or a close female relative was violated by an Arasaka hire. Next up we have ACPA Trooper Racer Chiba. Although most don't consider ACPA troopers to be solos, since most of their successes come via the big hulking chunk of metal the trooper is purely controlling, Chiba is an anomaly amongst his ACPA trooper colleagues. Born in East LA before the collapse, Chiba had a relatively normal childhood and early adulthood until he joined the army. In his deployment to the South Am War, he went cyber psycho at the tail end of it. He was hospitalized and ended up joining Nomads at Metacore, and shortly after became a test pilot for the Jacksuit program, leading to him becoming the most experienced ACPA trooper. His most notable achievement is his single handed extraction of Mr. David Sato from the Raven Micro Cybernetics facility in Evergreen, Colorado. At number 5, we have Jenny Flex, the personal escort of rocker and media icon Jack Maximum, who's averted assassination attempts, kidnappings, and harassment. She also handled Justifiable Homicide's Long Walk Tour, where the entire band visited 16 cities in the US while fleeing federal investigations. This whole operation went off without a casualty. Rumors are she worked under the CIA or served in the South Am as a SEAL or a sniper. Like others on the list, Jenny Flex likes to remain under the radar and has a trusted bio-sculptor. At number 4 we have John Jones aka Manhunter. John Jones does not exist in any database and no one has ever met him and if they have, they refuse to admit it. He hunts and captures people for a living with his specialty being recovering lost children and disillusioned cyber psychos. Rumor has it that Jones lost his entire family during martial law, despises the government and helps families in need stay together. He's an untraceable vigilante and has rescued numerous missing children, cyber psychos and drug addicts. At number 3 we have rock star Lance Rock. An ex-marine, Lance began his career as a solo on the set of a movie remake of For A Few Dollars More. 
a group of nomads wanting to make a political statement about human rights, attempted to kidnap the entire cast, but not before Lance slaughtered all 16 of these nomads with the help of the film's security guards. Lance Rock, a womanizer by nature, went on to work as a security for Penny Prurient with an all-girl band called Cheap Dates and completed a successful extraction of a model from an employer's rival corporation. At number 2, we have Captain Andrew Boa Boa Wayland, also referenced in the 2077 gameplay. One of the most feared solos in the corporate world, Wayland worked for Petrochem in the 2020s. His crew, the Water Leopards, are notorious for high-level extractions and assassinations and have yet to fail a job of any sort. He survived confrontations with Black Hand, Flex and Jones, and is well versed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Infighting has plagued the Water Leopards however, fragmenting them and causing issues over time. Wayland is nicknamed Boa Boa for his eye augmentations and his snake tattoo. At number 1 we have the solo solo, the always reliable Morgan Blackhand. A combat veteran and highly trained killer, Blackhand felt out of place in the world post-army involvement. Living a day-to-day -day life, he caught the eye of Militech after dispatching a gang leader who was pushing his buttons. Ever since, he's been on the Militech payroll as a mercenary and has earned his reputation of being the best by thwarting the kidnapping of Kerry Uridine and turning in all five kidnappers beaten but alive all by himself. He's pragmatic and street smart. Blackhand led a Militech special ops team during the Ocean War which culminated in the apex event of the fourth corporate war, the destruction of Arasaka Towers. During this conflict, Metalhead solo Adam Smasher backed by Arasaka, donning a Dai Oni battle suit, and Blackhand who led a Militech strike team tussled as the tower crumbled to the ground. The outcome is unknown, although we do see Adam Smasher as an Arasaka loyalist in the most recent trailer. Now somewhere on this list surely fits the cyberpsychotic Borg Adam Smasher. Smasher spent 6 years as a marine before he was booted out for insubordination. After this, this aggressive solo was hired by a corporate bigwig to snatch tech from a competitor but met an untimely demise via a rocket. This had Smasher flatlined for a good 8 minutes before his brain was recovered and was inevitably stabilized in a life support tank. Smasher's body was decimated, but luckily for him, the same corpo who had hired him in the first place offered him an interesting proposition, a 15 year contract in exchange for a full body conversion. Realizing that metal was in almost always superior to meat, Smasher was and likely still is one of the most feared solos in the cyberpunk world. With the superior physical abilities of full Borg solos like Shaitan and Smasher came a martial art design just for these bodies. Panzerfaust, which translates into armor fist, is the means by which metalhead solos acclimatize to their new abilities. Becoming well versed in the art of Panzerfaust can make even a simple strike feel like getting hit with a shotgun slot. And there you guys have it, what solos are, some of the top tier solos from the cyberpunk universe, and more insight into two of the biggest names in the cyberpunk universe, Morgan Blackhand and Adam Smasher. I also wanted to thank you guys so much for 50,000 subscribers, this is only the beginning, so stay tuned. As always, thank you guys for watching, and for more cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.